Hey folks, Steve here with an unboxing video of The Deadly Woods, The Battle of the Bulge, published by Revolution Games, and designed by Ted Razor. I feel like I'm always talking about Ted on this channel, playing a lot of his games and reviewing a lot of his games, and, well, here we go, here's another one. <laughs> um, so this is uh, a, a game that is, I suppose, unofficially a part of the Dark series, so the Dark Sands, the Dark Valley, and so on. Uh, this game being published from a different uh, publisher than the rest of those games has a slightly different name, so being called the Deadly Woods. Uh, and I think this is my first box game from Revolution Games, so I, I have Fury at Midway, which was a bag Ziploc game from this publisher. Um, this is a boxed version of the game. I think you can get this in a bag version if you so choose. I, I wanted the... Uh, the box, because I like boxes, that works pretty good, right? Now, I just got this today, and this is just released, um, fresh off the presses, and we'll do an unboxing here. Uh, I've left this sort of plastic bag uh, wrapper around the game because it did not appear to have uh, shrink wrap, so this was the, you know, this and some other packaging in a box uh, sent from Revolution Games, so this is sort of, you know, the shrink bursting is basically an unbagging in some ways. Um, so let's start taking a look. Let's talk about the game a little bit. Uh, this is uh, a bulge game, which uh, I would understand there are many bulge games. So is there a reason to have another uh, if you already have many? Um, well, depends on how much you like the dark system um, and the chip pull mechanism that uh, Ted uses. Oh, it looks like I've got this upside down. There we go. Uh, I see you can read a little bit of the blurb there. It's a trip chit driven operational war game covering the Battle of the Bulge see some of the details on game scale, and playing time 6 to 12 hours. So this will be a pretty long session, single session, or maybe two sessions. Uh, and you can see some of the counters here. We'll get a closer look at all that. Um, I'll just say that the box is a little bit uh, thinner than your Compass or GMT standard box. So just one of those uh, slightly thinner box models. Uh, the box quality I think is pretty standard. Um, I do like the cover art used here of the sort of snowy forest. Um, just very nice looking, aesthetically pleasing. Uh, doesn't tell you anything about the game because um, it's just aesthetics, but I do like it. It's nice. So standard box. Um, it's not like a super thick deluxe box or anything, just sort of standard, standard quality. Get that opened up here and we'll just kind of walk our way through uh, what we have inside here. So first things first, we are looking at Player Aid 1. Uh, looks like on the back side, just a reprint of the cover, uh, and this being a single page breakdown of combat units, different assets that can be added to combats. Um, you can see similar types of stuff in the Dark Sands. Uh, and a way to describe the turn record chart and what rate replacements come in. All this kind of good stuff here, real basic guidance on the stuff you're going to see on counters and or the map. Now looking at, uh, there's additional player aids. Player aid 2 and 3 are here, um, and they are both double-sided. So I guess, you know, they wound up with five aid pages, um, and they didn't need another. Uh, player Aid 2, combat results, terrain effects on the back side, action shit summary of what the different action shits can do. Uh, very similar to the Dark Sands, I think, in structure here. And, oh, it looks like, oh, I, I see. Ha ha ha. Two copies of this one. So, uh, one copy of a Player Aid chart with basic uh, pictures and illustrations. But then the players, Player Aid 2 and 3, are on a sheet and each player will get one. So that works. Both players get what they need for uh, playing the game. Uh, here's the rule book. Looks like it's in a two-column standard format. Um, no color that I see, and it doesn't look like um, there's much in the way of any pictures. So uh, maybe a, a little bit here of the counters, but otherwise um, oh, okay, so there's a couple of pictures used for uh, examples and clarity, uh, but not many. On the back, you have an action shit availability 
breakdown. So what chips are, chits are available, which turns. Again, very similar to some of the other games in the broader series. So it uh, looks like we're coming in at 23 pages, um, some of these being designer notes and things. So, so really about 20 pages of actual rules, probably. Um, so it's going to be a pretty straightforward game, I suspect, in terms of actually playing it out. If I compared it to the Dark Sands, I bet they're, they're pretty similar. Uh, and then here are uh, a page and a half of counters. Now, um, it looks like these are the uh, higher quality brown core counters. Um, they feel pretty sturdy. Uh, so I have to see once I get punching these guys. Uh, but these, these look like to be pretty solid counters, uh, which is good. Um, definitely, you know, as time has worn on, like the standard counters are nice, but I do like the, the thicker counters using brown core. They just tend to um, feel lit a bit firmer, um, higher quality when you're moving them around the map. Uh, you can see the breakdown of the units, their combat strengths and movement. Um, pretty, pretty basic breakdown that I can see here. You have uh, the two sides and then some additional counters here. So, yeah, one sheet and a half. Nothing too crazy here. See the backs. Uh, and then it looks like we get down to the map. There is a nice little blue die here. Just the one. One blue die. Uh, there's a setup map, which I'm not 100% sure what this is used for. Because um, they didn't have these sorts of things in the Dark Sands or the Dark Valley. So I'm not sure if this is just, you know, here's where you set up and you align this with the actual uh, game map. I'll have to look at this and just kind of understand what, what's being, what's the purpose of this. So sorry I don't have uh, the information for you right off the cuff. Um, I will have to look at that. And then here is the map. I'll sort of get this opened up a little bit. For you. Yeah, see, it does look like uh, the setup map uh, does mimic It's part of the map. Maybe you use this as a reference uh, for setup. I'm, I'll have to look into that. You can see the, uh, the map itself is paper map. Um, I do like the overall aesthetics of the map uh, being sort of the wintry uh, forest uh, look to it, um, stretching from, uh, and I'm sure I'm going to butcher any of the French names here on the map, Fumé in the west, in the east, uh, Prum, and yeah, I mean, it looks like, you know, for a bulk game, this is going to be pretty typical uh, map coverage for what areas are uh, included. And then uh, you can see over on the far side here you have boxes for eliminated units, uh, German units, terrain key, various charts, uh, and reinforcement schedules, that kind of thing. Uh, so a pretty, pretty straightforward package. So I mean, I you know I base a lot of what I'm looking at here off you know hey I've been, this is probably uh, going to going to be very similar to the Dark Sands in terms of complexity. Difference being instead of a really really long map. Um, it's on a standard sized map um, and, you know, much more square in formation. So you're going to be able to sit across from your opponent uh, one side, you on the other, and, you know, work your way through uh, the, uh, the scenarios. So um, if I just refer back to, I want to check before we wrap up this quick video. Um, as I look at the uh, rule book, it does seem like there is a setup for the overall game. Um, I do not see... I do not necessarily see scenarios in here, like specific scenarios that you would play if you weren't playing the full 12 turn uh, campaign. So I, it does look like that is just the one scenario. Um, don't know if there's any plans to have additional shorter scenarios. Um, but the 12 turns, you know, may play very quickly. But again, it, you know, 6 to 12 hours um, might have been nice to see a, a smaller one um, just to, to play it out. Because I think um, 
other games in the series kind of had a, you know, like short two to three turn scenario um, or what have you, but maybe this one just, you know, th there's no value in cutting it up that much. So there you go, guys. Um, we're, we'll go ahead and get this guy uh, together. Um, looking forward to trying this one. Not exactly sure how soon um, I'll get to it for uh, doing stuff on camera. I would like to do it. Uh, just because I've covered other games in the series, and to me this is part of that same series, and worth a check out. Um, you know, there's other games in the series still to come from other publishers and, and all that stuff. It's definitely, I think, a uh, pretty good system for sol solitaire play, solo play, because of the chit pool. It just happens to make for a really easy uh, style of play, and of course that's what I've been doing lately, so that's pretty cool. Um, so here you go, the Deadly Woods, the Battle of the Bulge from Revolution Games. I uh, hope this was valuable to folks, and as we see other folks pick up the game, I'll be interested to see what people think of it, uh, and look forward to trying it myself. So, uh, there you go guys, just a quick one for you. Uh, take care, keep on gaming, catch you later.